day five on the road, and this morning we find ourselves up before sunrise once again in the tiny town of Sesrim. We have another long day of driving ahead and want to get going early, and after watching the orange sun pop over the red dunes, we get our tents backed away and hit the open road. We are on the road again, heading north. I think we've got about a six hour drive today, although in reality, I think it's probably gonna be more like eight hours because we'll be stopping at the towns of Wolfus Bay and Swakopmund, which are two of the bigger towns in Namibia. Um, firstly, because they're cool places to visit. There's a lot of history there. And secondly, because it's a perfect place to resupply with some food, especially meat. Um, because from then on, the rest of the trip there's really no big towns that we're going through it's very remote and we need to be very well stocked so we'll spend some time there we'll pop in at the beach you can't go to namibia without seeing the beach so next stop is volfus bay and it's probably going to be a three hour drive at least to get there so focus on the road let's head north the black top does not last very long and we soon find ourselves back on the gravel ah yes that feels more like Namibia. The first portion of our drive skirts around the Namib desert with yellow grass on all sides and mountains sticking up in the distance. Soon we'll be crossing the Tropic of Capricorn as we trek further north. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this drive this morning. Um, I'm sure you are too. It's so beautiful. We're starting to see a bit more grass here. Obviously the further north we go, um, we actually probably moving into the tropics at any moment now uh, crossing the tropic of capricorn and it's getting a little bit closer to the equator and a little bit greener but yeah we're seeing a bit more grass the mountains are starting to change we're seeing more sort of bigger boulders on the mountains and you know the geology looks a bit different and yeah just beautiful flat open plains with these acacia trees popping up every now and again just sort of typical african savannah i think that's what i'm looking forward to most about this whole trip is just the changing landscapes going from desert like we had yesterday to the okavango delta which is green victoria falls which is just the more water than you'll ever see in your life um, it's going to be diverse and interesting and that's why we're doing this I wonder when we're going to see something other than a hemp spark or a jackal. We do see something interesting as a sign plastered with stickers from all over the world catches our eye and we pull over for some photos. The Tropic of Capricorn is one of the five major circles of latitude marked on world maps, with others of course being the equator, the Tropic of Cancer, Arctic Circle and Antarctic Circle. Only 3% of the world's population live south of the Tropic of Capricorn and we're proud to be among that number. We are now of course in the tropics and the heat would become pretty intense over the next week and a bit as we'd only be crossing back over the Tropic of Capricorn in 11 days time. Our surroundings begin to change once again as we start to descend the Kuiseb Pass with grassy hills rolling past us on the way down. The Kuiseb River isn't much to look at when it isn't flooding, and this is its state most of the time, but when these desert rivers do come down in flood, it is really something to behold. On the western side of the river we start ascending again and when we reach the plateau we find ourselves in a very different world. Hello again to the Namib Desert. This section of the drive through the desert towards Volfus Bay was probably the most boring of the entire tour and it was quite a fight to stay awake and stay focused. Eventually the long slog comes to an end though as we suddenly see a colour we haven't seen in a while. Green. Oh, and pink too. Those are flamingos. Mm. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the metropolis of Volfus Bay. Volfus Bay is the second largest city in Namibia, being home to the only natural harbour capable of taking large ships. With a natural bay here, these waters are rich in plankton, which attracts southern right whales and gives the town its name, Volfus Bay, or Whale Bay in English. So here we are in the town of uh, Volfus Bay. I expected it to be this little tiny town in the desert, but actually it looks like it's, it's uh, thriving pretty good considering its location. Um, from what I understand, Volfus Bay, um, bec because of its location on a little a natural harbor here, is Namibia's main shipping port. Um, so as we came in, we saw massive cranes and you know a lot of big ships docked there, including cruise ships. You can take cru uh, MSC cruisers from Cape Town to, to Volfus Bay. And then uh, all the way around here, you can see some pretty nice houses along this waterfront area. So yeah, we've just stopped here for a, maybe a quick cup of coffee. You can't come, come through here without stopping and uh, looking at the Atlantic Ocean. Namibian Ocean ticked off the list. Uh, we're going to have our coffee and then we're going to head north towards the little town of Swakopmund, which I think is very similar but a little bit more touristy. We couldn't hang around here for too long, but I'm really glad we took the opportunity to stop off and enjoy the short taste of Namibia's coastline. We take the coastal road north towards the town of Swakopmund, and this was an interesting drive. To our right, the road lined with palm trees and massive dunes as far as the eye can see, and to the left, holiday homes along the beach. This area is called Langstrand or Long Beach and it's a good place to buy a house if you want coastal access because there is no shortage of beach here. You'll notice a lot of fog rolling in from the sea. This is because of the freezing cold Benguela current that comes up from Antarctica and makes landfall here cooling the air down. When the cold air meets the hot desert dunes the fog forms and blankets everything and this is actually what allows animals like the Gemsbuck to survive. It's the only way they can get water. In the town of Swakopmund, we head straight to a grocery store and stock up on some fresh food. And it felt like heaven for me. This was some of the best meat that I'd seen in a very long time. And for a very reasonable price too. Well played Namibia, you know the way to my heart. With the big uh, shop that we've just done, uh, we need to now play a little bit of Tetris to get all this food inside the fridge and freezer. Obviously in this in this heat we can't play around with storing stuff outside the fridge. So these little uh, baskets come in very handy. Ugh. Bunch of meat goes here in the freezer. Drop this one in. This one on top. Fits there nicely. And then we've got one fridge compartment there. Pop another one on top. Put this lid on. A little bit tight, but that should fit there. There you go. While Volfus Bay feels a bit more industrial, Swakopmund has the feel of a relaxed holiday town. We tried to spend some time down at the beach, but the fog was just too thick to see anything, and we soon waved goodbye to the seagulls and hit the road again. We saw plenty of infrastructure being built on our way out of town. Turns out, Namibia is the second largest producer of uranium on Earth, supplying 11% of the global supply, and the Rusing mine nearby is the oldest on Earth. Namibia also has the richest marine diamond deposits on Earth, and rumor has it that a massive amount of oil has just been discovered offshore. Namibia may look like a wasteland, but there is plenty of money buried beneath all the sand. Well, we've just uh, driven for about a little under two hours from uh, Swakopmund and uh, we've gained 1,200 meters elevation. So landscape has changed a bit. We've got grass and trees all of a sudden and we're about to take the turn off now to Spitzkopper. So very excited. Probably another half an hour to 45 minutes to get to camp and we're going to be here for two nights. So first proper rest day.
So we've checked in and uh, now comes the hard part. We've got to pick a campsite and what's so awesome about Spitzkorper is that there's all these sort of wild self-catering dedicated camp spots spread out over this whole area and you can drive around and pick whichever one you want and every single one of them is so so amazing so yeah that's that's going to be tough driving around and picking one but i don't think we can actually go wrong i think every single one of them looks great i think we'd want to find one with a, a view of the main spitzkop but we'll take what we can get as you can see from the dash cam it took us a really long time to agree on a campsite all of them were just so awesome in the end though we made a decision based on the location of the spitzkop itself we wanted a clear view of it and wanted it to keep us shaded during the day. This is the Grootspitzkop, also called the Matterhorn of Namibia. It's a solid monolith of granite and stands at 1728 meters elevation. This isn't super super high but what makes this unique is that it stands alone in an otherwise very very flat area. It's like it doesn't belong here. Well guys, it doesn't get better than this. Uh, Spitzkopper heard so much about this place and finally we're here and I've got to say out of all the campsites we've been at so far, this is by far, by far the best. We've just got so much space to ourselves, we can make a little bit more noise and the backdrop with the big Spitzkop right behind us, that's a thousand seven hundred and something meters um, over there. It's pretty insane. Um, don't get to see this every day. And we're gonna enjoy it. We're here for two nights. Whether we'll stay at the same campsite for both nights or not, we're not sure, but it's very likely we will. Um, right now we're just setting stuff up, making some shade, and we'll get a fire going shortly. And we go take a walk to enjoy the sunset and just soak it all in. What a view! With camp set up, we head off on a short walk up to a lookout point to watch the sunset. No, that's not us. That's someone with a bit more ambition than us. We're choosing a slightly less dangerous route. <laughs> we find a rocky outcrop in the middle of the valley that gives us a panoramic view of the surrounding mountains, but more importantly, an incredible view of the sunset. Time has come to open a new uh, container of coffee and this one is a little bit different. Previously we had the, I think it was called the African blend or out of Africa mix which was very suitable for you know heading into southern Africa on a trip. This one is called childhood memories olden days. It sounds really corny but it just got me thinking you know we think of the olden days as you know the good old days or your, your parents days or your grandparents days but someday the days you're living now will be the olden days and I cannot wait to look back at, uh, at these adventures sometime in the future and look back fondly and just be able to show future generations like hey this is what we did 
back when we had diesel trucks you know before the electric before electric vehicles were what everyone drives and things will change but you know make memories now while you can and show the future generations what you did Tensions oh, rush for that I never seen that oh. Because you said to me, no, I'm pretending to get it wrong because I feel bad for you and then you kept getting it wrong. But then <laughs> I was pretend. like, and then I was like, just get it right and then you still got it wrong. A <laughs> night like this out in the wilderness uh, deserves a good African dinner. And uh, we're doing the good old bry tonight. We've got some steaks, we've got some lamb chops, we've got some vorsch, and we've got some uh, sweet potatoes wrapped in tin foil, which we've put in the coals as well. So, a good, well rounded, well balanced meal. We're enjoying the evening. Uh, we can stay up nice and late tonight because we have our rest day tomorrow. Get up a little bit later tomorrow. You don't have to get up early and drive, which is awesome. And then, obviously, got the whole afternoon to have fun and cook, cook some more food and whatever. But enjoying tonight and uh, yeah, I think we'll probably be quite tired when we head to bed, but that's all good. It actually felt really good to just know we didn't have to drive the whole day tomorrow and we had a wonderful time winding down and discussing our plans or rather lack thereof for the next day. It was a memorable night under a bright moonlit sky.